Who doesn't like to occasionally start up some salt with some unpopular opinions and hot takes? I think I have some unique opinions that are related to visual novels. So in this video, I'll be covering five of my personal hot takes related to visual novels. First, I'll start off by saying I actually don't mind localizations in visual novels, but emphasis on don't mind. I've seen extremists on both sides, with people who hate any changes to honorifics or memes, and people who heavily defend and support any localization change. I consider myself kind of more in the middle. I honestly don't really care if honorifics are included in a translation or not. I've studied enough Japanese language to both know what they mean, but also to understand why some localizers either remove honorifics or localize them into something else. That said, I still have my limits limits on what sounds too weird. Memes kinda just depend on the execution and genre, but I generally don't mind them either, but my personal only flaw is using memes that aren't really long lasting. It'll mean the meme might be funny if you read it within the first few months of release, but if you read it within over a year or so, it's possible the meme might be dead and people go over people's heads. Also, depending on the character and joke, you do not fuck with English. I guess this can technically be hit or miss depending on the part of the visual novel community, but I actually like H scenes in visual novels, and not just for the plot and character development, though having that can help. I do see hardcore fans who only read 18 plus VNs, and I also see people who exclusively read plot VNs, especially ones that are all ages by default, like Ki or Ryukishi works. I also see people who claim to not like H scenes, but consider the removal of them censorship. That said, a particular critique of Aitchings that I see from both fans and non-fans of Aitchings are how repetitive they are. But honestly, I actually kind of like the style of H scene writing in visual novels. Sure, a lot of them have similar dialogue and tropes, but to me, it just gives Eroge a particular charm with their H scene writing. I honestly don't even mind when H scenes feel like they're interrupting or shoehorned in or whatever, as long as it's done well my switch could be flipped. And Eroge tends to have scenes I tend to like more often than other places. That said, I much much prefer vanilla stuff, so I'm not going anywhere near anything dark or fetishy. I actually like a decent amount of anime adaptations of visual novels. And I don't just mean the generally considered great ones like Clannad and Stein's Gate. I think anime adaptations can improve on pacing issues many visual novels have, and an omnibus format like Amagami SS can solve potential route consistency issues. Some examples of anime adaptations of visual novels I like include the following. With Little Busters, I like that it pulled a Clannad anime and mixed the common route stuff with the heroin route stuff, since I generally liked common route more. Not having to do a baseball minigame is also nice. I actually kind of like Rewrite's anime adaptation. Rewrite is a case where we would need a 50 episode omnibus anime just to adapt everything, and I actually like season 1 just focusing on making a fun anime only route. And of course seeing more Kotori in animated form was very much a pleasure. For DS Ide, I had a kind of weird reason for liking it, but considering that the main villains were Nazis, I was amused at the English dub, yes I actually like them, having German accents for them. Maybe not the most authentic accents, but it made the experience much more unique than just having the typical edgy Japanese villain voices. The Grisaya trilogy anime is interesting. Obviously the first season was super rushed, but having the animation, and most importantly, Yuji being voiced by Takahiro Sakurai, made it worth despite the route plot changes. The second and third seasons focusing on the main plots of Labyrinth and Eden respectively were much better, and it helps they were basically cheesy action plots in the original visual novels anyway. A really unpopular opinion, but I actually like the Umineko anime. Ryukushi visual novels suck at pacing, and I thought the anime did a better job of that while still showing the hamminess of the plot and the characters. Of course, I do have my limits with anime adaptations. For example, I think the magical anime is basically fan fiction with bad generic harem anime comedy instead of the usual charming magical unique humor style. One of my most passionate hot takes, I do not consider the following visual novels. The Ace Attorney series, the Danganronpa series, the Zero Escape series, and the like. To me, when I think of visual novels, the novel part is important to me, and with series like these, there's way too much required gameplay for me to consider it a novel experience. There are admittedly fringe cases like Baldur's Sky, that's only because the visual novel is so long and ultimately the gameplay only comes up in specific sections and not a constant requirement while reading. That said, I do think most of these types are actually great mystery puzzle games, especially the Ace Attorney series being one of my personal favorite game series of all time. I just do not consider them visual novels at all. I'll end with some popular visual novels I wasn't a particular fan of or I just don't think deserve quite the high ratings they usually get. Sayana Uda is one of my least favorite visual novels. I'm not against dark visual novels per se. In fact, I like Kikokugai, Totono, and Muramasa from Nitro Plus just fine. However, I think Sayana Uda was just way too shallow and shock value heavy for what I assume was supposed to be a tragic love story, and some of the plot twists were way too stupid for me. Dies Irae is one of the more well-recommended Chuni action visual novels. 
I think it had a solid start, but I really did not like how obnoxiously talkative the characters got, especially during fight scenes. I guess that's the point of the Chuni aspect, but I couldn't enjoy the fight scenes due to how obnoxiously hammy and randomly philosophical characters got in monologues and narration. While I do overall like these visual novels, as I said earlier, bad pacing can heavily bring down stories a lot more than I'd like. Hikodashi, Umineko, and Muvel of Alternative get hit the hardest for me in this regard. I think Ryukishi in general just needs an editor. He could potentially get each episode to almost half their length and still get the point of the story across. Muvel of Alternative admittedly is partly because its prequel is already 20 to 30 hours, but an additional 50 hours despite how epic its story gets is a bit much. I'd see the one thing they could have easily cut down was all the info dubs you get. Since it's clear the story is all about the drama, which they do well on when it gets there, it's just that there's way too many info dubs that bring down the pacing of both pre-fight scenes and during the fights themselves. And those are five of my personal visual novel hot takes. What did you think of this list? Did you agree with any of them, or do you heavily disagree with any in particular? Do you have any opinions you consider unpopular related to visual novels? Feel free to leave a comment below.